The charges against the man accused of kidnapping and murdering a Beaverton nurse earlier this month now include first degree murder. The latest on this case coming up in our top local story. And take a look at the stash of airsoft guns and fake ammo. This is what Florida authorities found in an 11 year old's room after he threatened to commit a mass shooting. We have more on his arrest and charges coming up in our national headlines plus. And it's disturbing because we are 50 days away from an election and we have yet to hear answers about how is this gonna get fixed. Oregon lawmakers wanna know how more than 300 people, none of whom are US citizens, were mistakenly registered to vote. And this cute baby hippo is taking TikTok by storm. <laughs> we'll get into her rambunctious rise in popularity later in our show. Your 6 a.m. hour of sunrise starts right now. Six o'clock hour on a Tuesday morning here on the Sunrise Show. Rodney Hill. Yes. Do you know the difference between a hippopotamus and a weatherman? <laughs> Believe it or not. Believe it or not. I think this is true. It's close, but it's true. The hippos have bigger mouths than the weather people. That's not what I was looking for. <laughs> and now that I think about it, if you don't know the actual difference, I'm not sure I want you doing my forecast. That's fair. What you is the tell answer? us the difference? That was the joke, actually. He was, oh, that, he was supposed to say, I don't know. And I was supposed to say, if you don't know the difference, Rod, then I don't want you doing my forecast. But he went and gave me the big mouth answer and threw the whole thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have big mouths, don't they? I mean, so do other people. But the hippos, I think, just barely uh, beat us on that. Scattered showers out east. There were 60 mile per hour winds and some of these storms have turned severe in Malheur County last night. I think the main storm threat today stays east of Oregon. We have our an approaching weather system. You can see the rain and the clouds offshore. So that's still on track to eventually get wet this afternoon. Right now, all dry clouds starting to thicken up. We're at 56 degrees. We'll be mainly dry at noon, 64, and then it's later this afternoon the rain comes in. So a wet drive home today 62 at 5 o'clock. Here's Chris. At least the drive in this morning is dry and it's actually rolling along. OK, let's take up to Clark County real quick. I five near the interstate bridge. You can see that southbound drive breezing right along out towards uh, Cornelius Pass. This is out in Hillsborough. Highway 26 is busier a minute ago. Looks like uh, those folks have already gotten where they're going and I five through Tualatin. and no major issues out there right now. Guys, the freeway drive is a OK for now. Chris, thank you. A grand jury in Washington County indicted the man accused of kidnapping and killing his neighbor. Bryce Schubert allegedly murdered Beaverton nurse Melissa Jubain earlier this month. Thomas Schultz joins us live this morning outside the Washington County Courthouse with more on this. Thomas. Hey, good morning, guys. And yeah, Bryce Schubert pleaded non guilty to three charges, including first degree murder. That charge was updated from second degree murder. Now, new court documents show that law enforcement believes 32 year old Melissa Jubain was kidnapped by Schubert and that the 27 year old Schubert intended to harm her. Schubert is also believed to have caused intentional harm and abuse to Jubain's body after her death. Monday, family and friends filled the courtroom as a grand jury heard from 17 witnesses before deciding there was enough evidence to indict Schubert. Schubert was not physically in the courtroom Monday. Instead, he appeared via video from jail with most of his face obstructed. Now, back on September 6, Jubain's body was found after she had been missing for a couple of days. Police have not yet shared where or what led them to Schubert, and several court documents are still sealed. Jubain worked as a nurse at Providence St. Vincent Medical Center. Now, as for Schubert, he remains in the Washington County Jail. His next court appearance is October 15th. Guys, Thomas, thank you. The family of a two year old toddler who died from a suspected fentanyl overdose is now sharing what they know about the tragedy and a warning. Some of the details here are disturbing. They tell us the girl was staying with her mother in Northeast Portland when she accidentally ingested fentanyl and died. The family says the mom tried giving CPR but left because she was afraid of being arrested. Police say they're still looking for her. Family members say that she has a history of addiction and did not have custody of the toddler at the time. The mom roll, went in to go check on her and had rolled her over. And when she rolled her over, her lips were blue. I was heartbroken. That is one of the worst things that could happen to anyone. The family tells us the girl's father, who also has substance abuse issues, is also missing. Meanwhile, in Clark County, the medical examiner has now confirmed that the death of a Vancouver toddler earlier this year was a result of fentanyl exposure. The 21 month old died in late March. Her mother, 38 year old Catherine Richards, was arrested last week and charged with manslaughter. She has pleaded not guilty. 
Some major changes on the way at Intel as the company deals with the slumping sales that have prompted layoffs both here in Oregon and around the world. Yesterday, Intel CEO said the company will essentially be split into two separate orders. So one will be its semiconductor manufacturing arm, the other its computer chip design operation. Intel also announced it reached a deal with Amazon to make custom AI chips for its data centers and is also delaying its plans for three international factories. Last month, Intel announced it's cutting more than 15% of its workforce after posting a $1.6 billion second quarter loss. Meanwhile, Boeing says it's implementing a hiring freeze in an effort to conserve cash. This comes as more than 30,000 workers walked off the job Friday and continue to pick it today, 1,300 of which are from Gresham. Union members are asking for a 40% pay increase over the next four years. The tentative agreement between Boeing and the union stood at 25%, though that also included Boeing removing annual 4% raises. Almost all union members voted to reject the deal and strike. Boeing's new CEO is facing pressure to find an agreement as the company struggles with both its finances and its reputation. Boeing says it's also considering temporary furloughs for some employees. The company and union are set to meet with federal mediators later today to resume negotiations. Meanwhile, Amazon will soon require corporate employees to go into the office five days a week. Right now, only three days are required. Last year, when Amazon executives began phasing in return to office mandate, many employees ended up leaving the company. Amazon told our sister station in Seattle that with the change, Amazon may find that certain jobs are no longer necessary, a move that some employees believe is by design. A full return to office is also expected to worsen traffic around the Seattle area. Before we get to Rod, I'm going to take a look at uh, this. Police in Arkansas went on a slow speed chase with a golf cart last week. Eventually, a random person that you saw there jumped on the back of the cart and was able to get the cart to stop. No word of any charges or if that was Rod Hill. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more to this story. I was just reading about this uh, on the Arkansas TV station's wow. website. So the, uh, the gentleman who apparently stole the cart or allegedly stole the cart, mm -hmm. stole it from a hospital. What? Uh, and he was being treated there. Uh, it's not clear what he was being treated for, but the hospital says that he was being very unruly and aggressive and was actually tased in the hospital because of his behavior. He got away, he jumped in that, hop, uh, that golf cart, drove off, and that was a hospital employee. I think you mentioned that part. Mm -hmm. It was a hospital employee who jumped on the back of the cart to stop him. And then he, I guess he suffered some injuries when he was thrown off the cart, went back to the hospital. Man, it's a mess. Well, as we <laughs> who grew up in Missouri often say, who knows what goes on down in Arkansas? Just don't steal golf carts from anyone. <laughs> Hospitals, golf courses, someone's private property. Yeah. It leads to bad news. Looks like everybody's okay at the end of the day. So, wow. All right. Uh, here's our weather system offshore. Been talking about it. I do want to point out, let me get out of the way. See the showers out east? We did have thunderstorms later in the day that developed in southeastern Oregon, especially Mount Here County. I believe the thunder mainly stays east of Oregon today, but those scattered showers will be with us decreasing in numbers a little bit later on. So with that said, let's focus on the incoming rain on the west side. Here's Futurecast 11 o'clock. Keep in mind, we could start seeing some light rain in areas a little bit sooner than what Futurecast is showing the heftier rain moving in. So here's the coast 11 o'clock rain starting to get going. Here we are at three o'clock. Could be some light rain in Portland and Salem, but this shows the heavy rain just starting to move in. And then just like that starts to break up uh, as early as in the seven o'clock hour. Timing similar to what we talked about yesterday, but it does not look like we're going to get nearly the total amount of rain that uh, we thought we would. Could be as little as five one hundreds in Portland later today into this evening. We do have clouds that have thickened up in the last hour or two. 56 is the number here, the other temps. So no issues out the door weather wise. We are all dry. We have light winds, 49 in Tiger, 51 in Gresham and Happy Valley. So commute wise, again, no issues this morning. But throw your rain jacket in because it will be raining in the area when folks get off at five o'clock this afternoon. Want to point out the winds in the gorge will be reigniting today. Could be some gusts up to 45 miles per hour out in the East Gorge a little bit later today with rain showers late day in the west end of the gorge. Forecast temperatures mainly 60s. The scattered showers out east decreasing in numbers and then the rain picking up later today uh, at the coast and the valley. Tomorrow the rain chance is gone. 72 morning clouds, afternoon sun, and I like that pattern really into the weekend. And that is your update for now.